So today we're going to talk a bit about how to actually start creating scripts for our Unity games. If you followed the previous episode, you should by now know how to set up Unity properly and how to set up the different windows and what some of them do. So we're just sort of going to continue off the last episode and actually start learning how to create logic inside Unity when it comes to creating video games. Now, before we get started, I do want to talk a bit about what exactly goes into creating a video game. Because if you're a complete beginner, you have absolutely no idea what exactly is required of you in order to actually get started on making video games. Essentially, I would divide it into three sections. You have the first part, which is learning the actual editor, which we're sitting in right now. Uh, so you'll have to learn how to use Unity. You'll have to learn what components are and which components you can add add on to your game objects for them to, for example, have gravity applied to them or something else. Um, so there's, you know, actually learning how to use the editor that we have in front of us here. The second part is learning how to actually program stuff into Unity. So if you want to create a script that makes the player able to move around, for example, when you use the WASD on your keyboard or just the arrow keys, creating logic inside your game does require creating, you know, scripts using code. So that is the second part you're going to have to learn in order to create a video game. The last part is not technically required, but it is something that you will pretty much 99% of the time have to do, which is create the assets for your video game. Of course, depending on if you're making a 2D or 3D game, it's a different software you might want to use for creating these things. Uh, for example, I like to use Photoshop when it comes to creating 2D games. And when it comes to making 3D games, I like to use either Blender or Cinema 4D. So there's different 3D drawing tools that you can use to create these 3D assets that you can insert into a game. It's just to kind of give you an idea that there is three aspects to making a game in total, at least if you have to like look at it very broadly. And that's basically learning the Unity editor, learning how to program, and then creating the assets and the art for your game. So those three things you're going to have to do in order to create a video game. So with that said, uh, the first thing you're going to do here is we're going to start learning how to create scripts together. Yay! A lot of you are sitting there <laughs> probably thinking, oh no, I hate programming and I hate the fact that you have to learn how to program to make a game. Just know that it's, it's really not that difficult. You just, like I said, take one step at a time, one victory a day, and you will get to a point where you can just create video games very easily. So it's no issue <laughs> to learn programming. Of course, I can sit here and say that because I know how to program already. Um, but trust me, I'll try to explain it in a way where people can understand. Hopefully. <laughs> So the first thing I want to show you is that inside my editor, you'll actually notice that I had something that you probably don't have from my previous video as well, which is I have inside my assets folder, two empty folders called scripts and sprites. Now I created these folders simply by right clicking, going to create and then folder. And then I just simply named them scripts and sprites. Scripts and sprites, scripts and sprites. There's a lot of S's in there. The sprites folder is something I created because we're making a 2D game, at least for practice, to get started. And sprites is usually the actual assets that you create, like I said, using Photoshop, and then import into Unity and then put inside your game, like inside your scene or something. It's a good idea to organize things a little bit. So having a sprites folder to put everything inside of is just a good idea. The scripts folder is the place where we're going to insert all the different scripts that we're going to have inside our game. So if I want the player to be moving, I might have a script called player controller. If I want a enemy to behave in a certain way, I might have one called enemy behavior or something. So having many different scripts is something that is going to get very messy if you don't have any hierarchy and organization organization inside your files. So make sure you have a scripts folder that you can just insert everything into. So what I'll do is I'll go inside my scripts folder and create my first. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll go inside the scripts folder. I'll right click, create C sharp scripts, and then I'm going to name it something that makes sense in terms of what this script has to do. Uh, in this case here, I'll just call it something like tests because we're not doing anything specific right now. Just just create a file called test, then click enter. And then it's going to get created here. Now, if I double click it, if you set up everything correctly, like I told you to do in the how to install Unity video that I linked in the last video, uh, you should be able to just double click and then it opens up in Visual Studio, which is the IDE that you're going to be writing your code in. Now, IDE is just basically a more fancy version of a text editor, just 
if you have questions about why I don't call it a text editor, um, a lot of people for some reason also call text editors for IDEs, which are not. There's a difference between the two. Inside of here, you'll notice that we already have some code to start with, and you're probably already starting to get confused because, oh no, I, I have no idea what all this stuff means. Uh, don't worry, I will go through it one at a time just to sort of explain. So in order to explain what exactly is going on inside this default script, once we create it for the first time, I'm gonna have to talk about some technical stuff. And some of it you may understand and some of it you may not understand. And I just want to mention that it is okay to not fully understand everything that is going on here. But what I do want you to keep in mind is that at a later point, once you get a little bit better at programming, you can return to this lesson here and then start understanding what I'm then talking about. Because then you have a little bit of understanding of programming and then you can go back here and then, oh, okay, so now you understand what I'm talking about, kinda if that makes sense. Basically, when it comes to C Sharp, we program in a way called object-oriented programming. What that basically means is that we program using namespaces, classes, and objects. Because a namespace, like the ones we have at the top here, are basically a collection of classes, which means that we have many different classes inside system, for example, so right now we're using system.collections, which is a namespace. We're also using system.collections.generic, and we're also using a namespace called Unity Engine. And right now you can see this one is white, and these ones are grayed out. And that basically means that right now, even though we are referencing these two namespaces that has many different classes inside of them, uh, we're not actually using anything from inside those two. We're only using something from within Unity Engine at the moment. And the reason we're doing that is because we're using mono behavior. So we'll delete that. You can see, oh, now this one is grayed out. So we're not actually using anything from within Unity Engine. Just to summarize, these are namespaces and a namespace is a collection of classes. The classes that we have inside these namespaces here are basically, just to put it very bluntly and very simple, code that has been created already that we can reference to and use in order to create things inside our own code. So if I want the player to jump, there might be a particular piece of code inside one of these namespaces here that allow for me to add a force to make the player jump upwards. So basically inside my code, I'll reference to another piece of code that has already been created that exists inside a class which exists inside one of these namespaces here. Um, and that is basically what is going on in front of you right here at the moment. Because right now inside this class down here, which is called test. So this is a public class, which means that we can access this class from any other script inside our code. And it's called test. And it's very important not to change this name because then I'm gonna start receiving errors. Uh, it's very important that the name of the document is the same name of this class here. So this is called test and the document is called test. It's very important. So. This particular class here called test derives from something called mono behavior, which means that we are inheriting other pieces of code from within one of these namespaces up here. Because Unity Engine, like I said, is a namespace and a namespace has a bunch of classes inside of it, has a class inside of it called mono behavior, which like I said, has some code that we can grab and use in order to do stuff inside our own code. So because I'm deriving from mono behavior and using the class that exists inside Unity Engine, I can now use these two methods down here because they exist inside this class here. Does that make sense? <laughs> so just to summarize, these two methods are methods that exist inside this class and this class exists inside this namespace and we need to have the namespace referenced up here, otherwise we can't use mono behavior. You can actually see if I delete it, we're gonna receive an error because, oh, what are you talking about? There's nothing called mono behavior. And I can then put it back and, oh, there it is. Okay, so it exists inside that namespace there. Uh, if I delete mono behavior, you can see that, oh, now all of a sudden these turn yellow, huh? Well, that means that these are not methods that exist inside another class because then they turn blue but these are actually completely new methods that I just created inside this class here, so therefore they are yellow. That basically is how all of that is connected. <laughs> I've never explained it in this way before, so I hope it makes sense. 
And of course, they're not turning blue again. They should be blue because I inserted it back in, just so you're you're aware of it. Maybe I can do something here to to make them blue. There we go. <laughs> So now we have these two methods in here as a default, and that's because a lot of times when we're creating code for a game, like the game that we have inside our Unity engine, uh, we're using something called start in order to load in different components or data that we want to uh, have when we start up the game, or we might want to every single frame inside the game run a piece of code. So now that I showed you what exactly the code inside our default C Sharp script is, I want to do a small demonstration just to kind of show you that we can actually do stuff inside our games using code. Um, so don't worry about understanding anything of what I'm doing right now. Just know that I'm going to demonstrate that we can actually do stuff inside our Unity game engine. So what I'll do is I'll go inside Unity and I'll create a new 2D object, Sprite, Square, and I'm going to rename this one as Player. And then I want to just recenter my player, so right click, reset, and I'll increase the height to 1.5, just so we have a little bit of height going on this player here. So now I can actually see that I have this going on inside my game view, I did actually change the background color to black, just so you know why it's not blue. And you can change that inside your main camera. And now that I have this, I need to actually apply physics to my player because one of the ways we can move stuff inside Unity is using physics. And in order to do that, we need to actually have physics applied to the player because right now, if we were to actually play this game, you'll notice that nothing is happening. He's not falling down, he's not doing anything. So I'll just go into Add Component. I'll add a rigid body 2D, which is the physics for a 2D character inside your game. And if we were to play this, you'll notice that now he's actually gonna fall down. Whoop, because we have physics. So there's gravity, there's you know different forces applied. Um, I'll go ahead and turn off the gravity so he doesn't fall down. So I'll set the gravity scale to zero. I'll change my collision detection to continuous and my interpolate to interpolate, which basically just allow for him to move smoother and also not go through objects if he collides with them. Like he'll actually hit them and then bounce off. I'm also gonna go ahead and freeze the rotation by going down to constraints and then freeze rotation set. I'll do that, save it. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll add my script to the player. So the script that we just created called test is down here. As you can see, it got added as a component. And that is basically when you have a mono behavior type class, like the one that we just created, you add them as components onto your game objects. So now that it's onto my player, I can go inside my code and I can say, well, first of all, if I want the player to move, I need to grab the physics components because for him to move, I have to add physics to him. That kind of makes sense, logically, I think at least. So I'll go ahead and say I have a rigid body 2D type data and I'll go ahead and call this one underscore RB. I'll just close it off here. And then this is just an empty container. This is just a variable or property. Like it doesn't have anything inside of it right now. It's just all I did was declaring it. So it doesn't have anything inside of it. So when I press start, I want this property to grab onto my rigid body 2D, which is the component inside this game object here. So because this component called rigidbody 2 d is already attached to the same game object this script is attached to. I can refer to it as game object with a small g dot get component. And then I'll simply say that I want to grab the component called rigidbody 2 d So by doing this, I have now grabbed onto the physics of my player, which means that I can now manipulate the physics of the player by referring to my rigid body, which is right here. So what I can do is I can also go ahead and say I want to add a walk speed or run speed to the player. So I'll say I want to have a float data type, which is a number, but with decimal points. I'll go ahead and call this one walk speed. And I'll just go ahead and set it like this. Then inside the start, I'll go ahead and assign a value. So I'll set walk speed to something like five. We could also set it to a decimal point because it's a float. So we can say 5.5 if we wanted to. F for float. Then I'm going to create another property. This one is going to be another float data type. And this one is going to be underscore input horizontal. 
And I'm just gonna close it off here. Let's actually make sure we spell that correctly. Then I'm going to grab this input horizontal. I'll put it inside update and say that every single frame inside my game, I want to listen for a player input, which means that if I'm pressing either A or D or the arrow keys on my keyboard, it's gonna move or do something. Um, so I'll set this one to get axis raw, which is the type of input that I want to listen for. And I want to listen for a horizontal, ha, <laughs> ha, re, horizontal input. So if I'm running left, this is going to be minus one. If I'm going right, this is going to be plus one. And if I'm standing still, this is going to be zero. So the number inside input horizontal is gonna change based on what I'm pressing on the keyboard. So what I'll do now, is I'll go below here and I'll say if, which is a condition, if input horizontal does not equal to zero, then I want to move my player because it means I'm not standing still, like I just said. And then I'll simply refer to my rigid body up here, and I'll say that I want to add a force to my player if I'm actually moving. So add force is going to be equal to a specific data. And add force is another method that we have access to because we have these namespaces up here, just to mention it. So this is code that has already been created for us. So inside add force, I'm going to say we have a new vector two. I'm just going to set the first one, which is left and right. So this is the x-axis. And I'm going to set that one equal to input horizontal. And then I'm going to multiply it by my walk speed, comma. And then we're going to take the up and down axis, which is the y-axis. And I'm just going to set this one to zero. So now, if I were to actually save this, go inside my game and play it, you'll notice that when I press left and right, I'm moving my player. So I actually have a bit of a game going on in here. So this is just to kind of demonstrate how we, using code, can actually start creating stuff using a script, which hopefully will motivate you into want to learn how to do Unity scripting, or C-sharp scripting, which is what we're gonna focus on in the next many lessons. So keep in mind that a lot of the stuff you will learn when it comes to C-sharp programming in the next many lessons is something that you might not see the practical reason behind, but trust me, once you do actually get to the point where you need to like make stuff move inside your game, it will make sense, but it won't make sense until then. So just kind of learn it and then wait. And then once we get to practical examples, you'll then realize, oh, so this is why we had to learn all this stuff. So with that said, I hope that you got something out of this and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.